결심까지 왔는데 1년에 한번 있는 이런 기회를 놓치면 엄청 아쉬워할 것 같고 네, OM, 처음에 OMG한테 졌을 때 그때부터 되게 이번 롤드컵이 힘들 것 같다고 생각하면서 계속 다 같이 연습을 더 많이 했어요 세계 팀들도 강력하고 해서 좀 쉽게는 올라갈 것 같진 않다고 생각했는데 지금 결승전까지 올라왔으니까 우루할 팀을 이기고 <웃음> 우승하고 싶어요 아무래도 어 여기 왔으니까 무조건 우승을 목표로 했, 했, 했거든요 그래서 꼭 우승을 해야지 목표를 이루는 게 아닐까 그렇게 만족스럽진 않아요 저희 팀의 임팩트 선수가 자꾸 큐가 안 맞는다고 놀리더라고요 화났어요 4강전에서 엄청 많이 놀렸어요 끝나고 그것도 있긴 한데 어, 저 형이 지금 리신, 리신 그러니까 미드 1대를 붙은 적이 지금 이, 어, 여섯 번째긴 한데 제가 5승 1패예요 그래서 좀 놀리는 거예요 좀 심하게 놀려요 <웃음> 기분 나빴어요 부담 없이 말할 수도 있고 그러니까 원래 친하지 못하면 좀 그런 걸 말하기 좀 그렇거든요 친하면 그런 걸다 말할 수도 있고 저형 리신 큐못 맞춘다고 말할 수 있고 일단 잘하고 싶은 마음도 있고 탑을 안갈 생각이에요 어, 트위터를 제가 하지 않아서 모르겠는데 일단 그 태그를 잘 모르겠는데 그 띵스페이커 저즈를 그 레딧에서 몇번 사람들이 올리더라고요 레딧에서 그래서 좀 유명한 유명한 것을 좀 느낄 수 있었어요 선수한테는 그뭐 뭐 자기만 할수 있다는 플레이니까 엄청난 칭찬인 것 같아요 별로 저만 할수 있다는 생각은 안 되고요 그냥 좀 과장되게 뛰어져서 기분이 좋은데 또 랭크 게임 하다 보면 저보다 잘하는 사람도 많아서 또 하샷 선수가 또 르블랑을 가끔 저보다 막저 저, 저 상대로 되게 잘해서 하샷 띵스 하샷 더즈도 만들었으면 좋겠네요 4강 경기했던 경기장보다 더큰 대에서 결승하게 될 텐데 많은 인원들이 온 상태에서 환호랑 박수 소리 이런 걸 들을 때 엄청 좀 짜릿할 것 같아요 저 좋긴 한데 제가 원래 경기장의 그큰 거에 따라 긴장도가 바뀐 게 아니고 약간 로또예요 날짜에 따라 긴장도가 바뀌어가지고 저희 엄마가 우승하고 오면 은막 꽃목걸이를 해준다고 했는데 아직까지 그 세레머니에 대한 생각은 많이 안 해봤어요 그냥 우승컵 들고 그냥 엄청 기뻐하면서 방방 뜰것 같아요 아니요 반지는 못 봤어요 아 당연히 끼고 다녀야 될것 같아요 왜냐하면 그뭐 자랑스러운 이, 일이니까 끼고 다닐 것 같아요 만약에 지더라도 주셨으면 좋겠어요 잘 모르겠어요 퍼레이드를 본 적이 없어서 그거는 저희가 일단 우승해야지 그 퍼레이드가 되는 건데 만약에 팬분들이 해주시면 엄청 고맙고 기쁠 것 같아요 Welcome back to the Staples Center and the Season 3 World Championship Final. It is time for Game 2 in this best of five title fight between Royal Club and SK Telecom T1. And after a dominating Game 1, Faker and his team are looking to make it two in a row against the Chinese champions. Yeah, and SK normally drops the first game in these best of five series, but they came out incredibly strong in Game 1, and that just puts even more pressure on Royal Club to come back in this Game 2. And just as a heads up coming into this match, Royal had the choice of sides and they have cho chosen as well to spawn on the red side as SKT yeah. did in their
seem like a mistake to lane swap. So that was maybe a bit of a misstep. They could have stayed top and actually kept pressuring with the Elise in a 3v1 and simply forced uh, SKT to do a move, and that way they could keep control of the game. Uh, so a bit of a misstep with the swapping down to the 2v2 and the 1v1, but we'll see what they, they go for now. Yeah, and I think the Vi game in the last matchup with for Royal Club was kind of supposed to be a ruse. It was supposed to be a little bit of a throwaway ban because I don't think they are going to try and target ban out Bengi once again. His Jarvan was clearly potent enough to work. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game two getting underway for the World Final Royal Club up against SK Telecom. SK Telecom this time will be starting out on the blue side and you can see straight away Annie Renekton banned out and Shen taken by Royal Club. This is actually a little surprising to me because I thought SKT would be willing to first pick a Renekton, but this tells me they might just be trusting in Faker right now. If there's an Orianna band, as we mentioned earlier, that actually forces... Uh, no, that... What does that do? That does not force a Gragas band that at all. That does not force a Gragas yeah. band, no. Gragas will most likely not be picked now because he's mm -hmm. mainly used as the counter to Orianna, which Royal has put out. Yeah. This does mean that Fizz could potentially be available for Whites, because this is yes. probably going to be an Ari for SK Telecom now. Zed is up. Oh! oh. Things okay. Faker does. I will do one prediction yes. now. There will be a Kale last pick from Royal, and there's going to be a Lulu support calling it. Yes, these are things that Royal plays against Zed. We thought, yeah. we were thinking, we thought it was going to be if Royal goes down two games, they might let Zed through because they do play Zed counters. It means that Royal has to find initiation in other parts of their team composition, or just hope that they get it for free. Because, I mean, there's a lot on the line here letting Zed through, but it is definitely a kill thing. I completely agree with the Fischio. Definitely. Well, Let's see now, though, what Royal will go with. Elise has been their favorite jungler all through the tournament. They always pick up when it's open. Now they actually go for Jowen instead. That might be to take away from Benki, who had a lot of early game pressure in the last game. Possibly maybe a Caitlyn for AD carry. She's one of the decent AD carries against the set, or maybe a Vayne who can actually also do quite decent against the set. Yeah, you're gonna need something mobile, that's for damn sure, because I think everybody's seen what Faker can do on this Zed, so it's gonna be something that we're gonna have to keep our eyes on. A Vayne against it, well, it's another mobile AD carry. Yeah, I mean, if I'm Faker right now, I'm realizing World is adapting to the Zed pick because they threw it out first. It's what they have to expect. Vayne can 1v1 Zed, for a fair portion of the game, one of the only AD carries that can do that. And if Royal is actually planning to go Lulu later, it means that, uh, sorry, if they're planning on going Lulu later, it means that Jarvan gives them the initiation. But as far as SKT goes, they get the top laner once again, since Shen and Renekton are down. And I don't think Royal has a realistic answer for this. It's gonna be very interesting to see what they actually will pick for the top lane versus Jack. The Vayne though is gonna be the key guy in this setup. Mm -hmm. If they go for the Vayne, I mean the Lulu and the Kale, they will have so much protection for the Vayne, Seb will not be able to kill Vayne, and they will be able to maybe clean up the entire team fight and therefore carry the game. If they log in the zone, I will surprise me a little bit, but it will give them a stronger 2v2 lane at least. Mm. Well, of course, we do see once again the fact that the impact is on that Jax. What sort of answer will they have for that Jax? I mean, we can talk about the Zed, they're going to focus the Zed, but that leaves Jax free. Yeah, I'm actually not sure what they're going to go yeah. with this Jax. They might maybe go for something like a Nasus. He's going to have a very hard time in lane. Yeah. Possibly a Cannon. Uh, I'm actually not sure. Oh, a yeah. Rumble pick. Okay. That's he decent. played one Rumble game earlier on in the World Championships and won with it, but I'm still sitting pretty if you're SKT right here. You have the most played support for Mondu in Zyra. If they go for Lee Sin, it is Bengi's four out of five champion picks in the semifinal. You have things Faker does on Zed, and you have Jax, who even though it's not an amazing matchup against Rumble, once he gets some farm under a belt, will just obliterate him. So SKT, I feel like, has done exceptionally well so far in this pick and ban. It's gonna be all about the last pick now for Royal, in my opinion. If they go for the Kale and they manage to get in a perfect ultimate to simply shut down the set and his combo, they might be able to win the team fight with a good old Rumble ult and a good Sona ult. But uh, the Quinn, not too sure this about is, that. This has got to be an Ezreal or a Caitlyn, if we know Piglet, because those are the things that he's playing right now. It's Corky, Vayne, Ezreal, Caitlyn are the four champions these guys share. And that's the Ezreal. All right. Now let's see the last pick. He was, he was playing to the crowd here. How many times do you get to show an oddball champion in front of the Staples Center. Yeah, it's not really something you pull out in the game, too, when you've got such yeah. a fantastic team comp, seemingly. What a Royal going with in the mid lane. 
Well, there's three picks I can see possible. Kale is one of them we talked about. Ari can do decent against set as well. Actually, has kill potential on set. If she snowballs slightly in the early game, get an early DFG, she might be able to kill the set in a 1v1. And there's always the safe pick in a Gragas. That can work in the lane, but mm -hmm. I'm expecting a Kale. You gotta think it's Kale. It's something that White's picked against Fizz. It's what we've seen Alex each do well on. What? Royal is out of their minds right now. <laughs> We, well, I just gotta wait. I just have to wait and see what happens. Well, Kelsey then has been successful throughout this tournament, but up against this team comp? No. Wow. What? Ooh. Okay. Okay. So, if I'm SKT right now, I am 2v1ing Whites. Or just hitting them with Zed, because both of those matchups are horrendous for Cassidy, especially because SKT main weakness is the early game, but they should have an easy early game against these Royal lanes. I'm liking SKT right now. Oh yeah, I'm definitely also for the SKT line right now. The thing Royal has to do, like, either they have to send the Cassidy in mid and simply hold, hope that he can farm on the tower, either in 2v1 or 1v1 versus set, or they pretty much forcing themselves to send Cassidy in a side lane where he's not very strong and Lee Sim will have a lot of easy gangs on him. The one thing that we do have to keep in mind, though, is that if Royal does survive the laning phase, the chase from Cassidy and Vayne is going to be immense. We have seen Peke's Cassidy. It's something Royal was incredibly familiar at banning because they banned Cassidy in all four of their semifinal games to get here. They do recognize the power there, but to give up what they gave up to SKT and the Zed and the Jacks is a bold game two move, to say the least. I think it's kind of scary that you have a, a Vayne on your team and you're, you have some hard crowd control, but that's on point. You've got to get the flag tossed down. Everything else is a silent or you can just walk at my Vayne. This is going to be quite scary. And we've heard Cloud9 in the NA season pick Vayne into Zed because they feel mm -hmm. it's the 180 carry that can actually fend for itself against Zed. So maybe they got something up their sleeve. They better. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. They better. Well, Tapicio, thank you very much for joining us once again throughout that picks and ban phase. We will be seeing you once again for game three, and game two is about to get underway. Half SKT stole a march on Royal Club. Can they take it two to zero with this seemingly fantastic pick comp for them? Honestly, this seems a little crazy to go into game two with. Well, Royal's a crazy team, is one thing we've learned about them. <laughs> the first time we saw them, they took one Baron buff and pushed three straight turrets to end the game in 28 minutes. Oh, they yes. swept OMG. If any team is going to make this composition work in the World Championships at the final, it's Royal. All right, here we go. Into game two of our best of five at the World Finals. SKT takes the blue side. Royal's choice in game two. They do go for red. So will we see an engage? That is the question. Our Royal Club hoping that they can steal an edge maybe from that start. They do catch out. On impact, they see was there and immediately back away. Impact not going to be able to take that ward down, but it does give them the coverage. They also have vision of Uzi down the bottom, so it seems nobody's going to go for that invade. Very interesting to see both of these teams, as we said, over and over, just face first near each other, 5v5. Now that they will spread thin, kind of be that human line of scrimmage, and they will all know that everything is safe. This again, though, stops them from getting their scouting wards in for the 2v1 lanes. I think overall in this game, there is a lot of importance on Lucky's Jarvan to succeed. He played so much lease in the semifinals and didn't necessarily perform on it. He had a very mm. poor KDA, even though he picked it in all four games. Jarvan was his main champion in the Chinese regional finals. And because Royal has picked what are weak early lanes, wow. Lucky has to augment those lanes and make sure they don't fall behind SKT because if SKT gets the slightest edge on Royal, we've seen their ability to control with wards, roam and turret dive, and just get objectives. This is extremely dangerous and important that Lucky performs. That's a pretty big push off right there. They won't get the pressure on the smite coming up at on the spawn of blue and they're going to have to resort to just going with an orthodox start here. So SKT, they're going to allow Lucky to get that easy jungle around. Does of course mean that Whites will be in that 1v1 mm -hmm. in that mid lane. Lucky will take himself that blue buff, red buff start for Bengi. So standard stuff here in game one. Not so standard in the picks and bands though. We'll see how that develops as this matchup goes. Yeah, and I am absolutely enthralled in the Faker lane against Whites because we haven't gotten to see Faker play Zed. We've seen a couple people play Zed, but it's been banned at least 90% of the time so far in this World Championships. Doran Shield start as well. 
I really wonder if Royal has a plan to focus, or if they're just going to ignore Faker and hope Whites can stand up to him with his Cassidy. Well, Royal is considering that that blue was still going to be taken. Lucky oh. smited the blue buff, which means he's not up here in time. It took longer to get red, and Godlike's going to find a 2v1. He's not going to catch him with a counter strike, but he will catch the kick on him. Is it going to be enough damage? Godlike desperately running away from this one. The Ignite is burning on the turret, oh. but he will survive. Wow. He covered some distance on that gank escape. I did not expect Godlike to be able to get out of that one. Bengi did the very standard red to blue buff, early gank top, and Godlike was just over pushed. He is extremely fortunate to not die to that gank attempt. So now the pressure is in the top lane. Bengi's gonna help out a little bit here, soak up the experience, or he may try to head middle. Faker's trying to put pressure in the mid lane, and SKT as a duo putting pressure on the bottom lane here. Yeah, Tabe taking a lot of damage, continuing to be harassed there by Mandu, and he's in a little bit of trouble. There's gonna be low hit points on that Sona Faker, meanwhile, putting the pressure onto Whites, but White's still doing a good job keeping up that CS farm. Yeah, but. SKT is already invading the Royal Jungle because as we said, Royal's uh -oh. early lanes are extremely weak. And even though White's, oh, he's a little too low for this. <laughs> Behind the turret, they go in. It's a one-two kick punch. Impact's just there to take a Polaroid. He wanted to say hello. He wanted to be part of the gang flying through, but they had it under control. That's what happens to Royal when everyone is pushed back to their turrets. They completely lose control of their own jungle, and it means dives like that are a possibility for SKT. Great execution as well. And the dives that Royal honestly were kind of famous for coming into this one, but it seems to have backfired on this time around. Uzi getting focused on Mandu, gonna lock him up. Barrier being burned there, but now he's putting pressure back on Mandu. Piglet goes aggressive, Whoa. a little too close on that turret, but Morshi Fatabe has oh. a goal. Oh, the snipe from Piglet, but now White's coming around the backside. He's trying to lock it down. This was the teleport to the bottom lane. If they can pull up a double kill here, it'll be worth it for White into the ward, but he gets oh. locked up. He's going to be forced to get the one. Lucky gets the other. So what seemed like a bad move by Uzi was actually a bait. If he could have dodged that Mystic shot, it would have been a clean two for O because Piglet and Manju were bloodthirsty going for that one. It still works out in the benefit of Royal. The teleport mid laner, a strategy, especially on Cassidy, somewhat taken from ex Peke's Cassidy, works out here for Royal. Worked out very well. While that was all happening, Fake got himself a clean bill of health in that mid lane is now heading towards the top lane. Godlike hasn't got flash available. He's in desperate trouble. This is big. Coming up onto Godlike. He does not even have that energy charged up below that or above that 50% mark. Faker hits him once. He's not level five. A good amount of harass is going to come out of this, but I think he might squeak out one more time. Shield comes on. They're forced to back off. 22 health by that one. Godlike is fantastic at just running away very slowly from opponents <laughs> because no one seems to be able to kill him in that top lane. Even so, that is more lane pressure loss for Royal and the assault of SKT's early lanes continues. And that could have actually brought White's a little bit of a breather in that main lane because, well, Faker was away from that line for a long time. Pinky has come back in there to try and clear him out. We do see Lucky making his way around towards those raids as well. So let's see if he heads down towards the bottom. There's no wards just there. Mandu's just boarded that tri-bush. Two quick things that are completely different in this matchup. Whites is being the first one to roam here over Faker, taking that teleport, not letting himself get in a bad spot. And also the roam here from Lucky on the Mandu. No they can lock it down for the kill. It's going to be there. Tabe gets another one for himself. It's really unfortunate that Tabe picked up that kill. They were trying to rush it before they thought a counter gank was coming from Benji, but the fact that Uzi was not the recipient of any of the turnaround gank when he baited in Piglet's Mystic Shot, and then that gank again doesn't give him gold, means he is not getting going despite all three kills being generated by their bottom lane. He is keeping up in farm, which is an Ezreal, which is pretty damn good against Piglet. Mm -hmm. This top lane got like has his two escapes been enough to save this lane? Because it is working so far pretty well up against Impact. Twice he's been ganked, twice he's escaped. Is that keeping Royal in the game? Royal needs to find a way of getting Godlike in teamfights because the only thing he's going to be doing against Jax is surviving. And I think the fact that Impact has tried to kill Godlike so many times is the main thing that's actually keeping that farm relatively close. 
those two attempts that Bengi created in the first game were kills on the mid lane. Godlike's done a very good job at kind of staving off the control that SKT already had by this match point. We had the, the Phage and the Sheen coming in already onto Piglet last game. It's definitely a different pace of game, and SKT is even playing it that way. Rumble's roaming down, though. White's is six, and they Ooh. might be looking to make either a gank play or a dragon play on Faker. <laughs> oh, Godlike throwing those harpoons in, keeping the flame spitter going. Faker just walks away just like Godlike did. I don't think they were quite on the same page there. Yeah, Godlike's going to spend all the time to roam down to this lane. He's giving Impact time to get back in the game, and Royal needs to force. I actually do have to give Royal a ton of credit. Only being 600 gold down here, even with Faker roaming around so much and trying to create action, is a huge accomplishment. And we can see Royal with the inventories being built up here. At least the tier, Whites is looking to stack, get that team to the late game, be able to get Vayne into that hyper carry position. We'll have to see if they're putting the chess pieces in order here. Three to two in those kills. The junglers look to only hold the lane so far for everybody. You're not really trying to get a snowball going just yet. I'd like not really keeping that trade going even with impact. We do see the red before Lucky. Lucky you hasn't, as of yet, really visited any of the lanes, other than to simply stave them off. Other than that bottom lane, that bottom lane where they got the kill again. Godlike getting jumped on by Impact. He can't leave that turret area. And now it seems like Lucky is actually getting pulled to a lane because it's losing, which is never a position you want to be in as a jungler. Jarvan not getting as many ganks in, he was like, Impact goes hard, they throw it in the equalizer, but he has the chance to instantly walk out of it. May turn it into a 2v1 kill, he goes on a godlike, he gets the flash, the Empower goes down, but Lucky gonna continue the chase. Lucky might get this kill, but down yep. the bottom lane, they're getting ready to count this one. Bengi's gonna come in around the side, he's already caught the kick on towards Tabe. Oh, Tabe's just gonna get melted. Wow, the execution right there from Bengi was exquisite. He landed his Q, walked into melee range, Ard him and then got the extra execute damage from his Q. They're going to continue pushing on this one and look out Royal. They are in big trouble turret-wise. Baker going hard on a dive there, gets himself in a tight spot, but he will not choose to go all the way to the bottom lane. The turret is going to go down. It looks like they're going to leave it at that. Piglet getting as many minions wasted as he can before he takes down the turret. First turret of the game, SK Telecom T1 will be taking that one down. Any second now. White, though, has got himself a good bit of clear farm. He's keeping going. He's falling behind Faker, but it's not the end of the world so far for this Cassidy. We know Cassidy can get going just like a Zed. Yeah, his Cassidy has been doing all right. But looking at the gold right now, knowing it's close to, close to 2,000 gold 10 minutes in, means Royal has to find a play that stops SKT from pulling ahead of them very shortly. They are losing the top lane, Impact versus Godlike. We saw Lucky come and gank and actually give up a kill. They are losing the bottom lane because Uzi has been repetitively dope and they've lost the turret. And even though White's is surviving, you cannot say he's winning that mid lane. If you lose every lane, you lose the game. That is almost always true. And Royal is losing every lane right now. And they're facilitating the way to keep doing it. As Krepo was, has been saying on the analysis desk, the junglers are going for that mobility. They're going for being able to get in your face. We see Bengi already with the mobility boots. Like you said, he's been in the bottom lane for the three-man gank on the two lane every time. They take mid turret. They go up two to zero on that. Even on kills, 2,000 ahead on gold as it looks like they're going to dance the dragon. And Royal would have to find their fight here. There's SKT who's cleared out the pink wards and running into a Zyra at Dragon Pit is extremely dangerous. Even Impact is coming down. The Dragon's getting low very quickly and Royal's actually giving it up. This is going to really extend that gold lead for SKT. That Dragon was huge. And yeah, they experienced the gold. It is all sliding. SK Telecom's way in. Remember, Royal chose to start on this red side. Yep. This was their choice. And so far, the counter picking has been countered by SK Telecom's star pick. Right. It's very strange to me how they were the side that is traditionally the side that can counter pick, yet all three of their lanes are weaker. They very heavily tunneled on a team composition that is around team fighting, but they have yet to be able to force those team fights or roam opportunities from whites. It's really SK Telecom reading it and outlaning them so strong. You see two of them going for a gank on Faker in middle, but they're not going to gank the Zed. They know it right off the hand. Godlike's got some ish or things to tend to in the top lane with the minions. It looks like everybody's going to start just getting the camps, taking in an experience. See if Royal can get themselves back into a position to guard. They have three mid now, which is going to pressure this, which means it's only going to be casted in to hold the turret if they keep going. They're really not in position right now. This bottom lane's in trouble. Look mm -hmm. at the movement of SK Telecom. Four members moving around the back. They're backing away already. Yeah. They should get yeah. out. 
That's a smart recall by Royal. Knowing that SKG. Oh, uh -oh that's gonna stop uh -oh. Uzi. Oh, just Uzi. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna see Bengi chasing him down. The Moby boots, they're gonna be coming into play. Uzi takes a few shots there. He kicks him up with the Dragon's Rage. A quick kill coming in onto Uzi for Bengi. Puts himself at 2 0 1. There was no hope for Uzi because he did not recall as quickly as Tabe. AD carries and supports have to be in absolute synchronization with each other. Even in backing. At the highest level. Even in backing. Because one got hit by the True Shot Barrage and that cost him his life. We do see Faker taking away that blue buff. So the invade has come on. And the SK Telecom starting to turn the pressure. Turn those screws onto Royal. Royal Club are in a little bit of a pickle right now. Because that top lane impact again continues to push on there. Bengi, well, he's been creating opportunities across the map, creating that pressure. And as of yet, White's, you know, he wants the roam, but simply mm -hmm. can't because SK Telecom, everywhere they're going, they're going in numbers. Everyone on Royal is trapped right now. And let's not forget, SK Telecom was the pre tournament favorite. And they have looked somewhat shaky in the semifinal. They lost two games to Najan Black Sword and barely moved on. But right now, this is the team everyone was expecting to see. They win every lane when they're strong in, the, in that part of the game. And then they control the jungle. Look at Bengi, still taking away the red buffs. Let's see if he gets caught here. Not even Ooh, close. interesting. They're being so aggressive still, but somewhat staying back. We see Bengi Whoa. now backing up. He knows he has the coverage from Faker. Faker also roaming a lot less, knowing that if they roam for the fight, Whites comes into the teleport, they are not in the better chance to win that. Impact takes down the top turret. They're keeping their lane steady right now. Royal is completely out of sync. Godlike runs in that lane despite not having an equalizer, and here comes Bengi. He just burned that equalizer, unfortunately for Bengi. The kick sends him away, and Godlike escapes again, this time not really of his own doing. We'll see where they go with this. White still knows he needs to stay safe in mid. He has no coverage towards his left side of the jungle, or the bottom side, I should say, only knowing that he can hug up with Lucky, but they may still lose this top turret. Godlike doing what he can. Lucky comes up, but they are drawing the entire team now, and Faker's pushing bottom. And Faker's going to continue and split push. He does not yet have his Blade of the Ruined King, which is really the dangerous item when you're a Zed. There is no one actually on Royal that will be able to deal with the split push of either Faker or Impact. So once again, Royal is in a similar situation that they were in in game one, where they have to group up as five to try and make something happen. But by the point they can group up as five, there are already strong split push 1v1 threats from SKT that are preventing Royal from actually grouping up as five and getting anything useful done. In any other game Royal Club were playing, they would have gone for that kill. Whites and Uzi both together, catching Mandu, slightly out of position alongside Pignit. 2v2. Two carries, they would have go for that one. But it seems that nerves may well have got to Royal because they are questioning themselves. And we can see Impact even taking a different stride in this game. Blade of the Rune King actually coming out onto Jax instead of the Triforce build this time. Looking to continue these fights, make sure the objectives are even in their favor once they get to that point. Siege onto this turret, but Royal does have a bit better Siege. There it is! Stop this time! Mr. Crescendo goes out, and Cres Lucky goes in! Crescendo and Equalizer land in, but Piglet's still alive at the back there. Lucky will go down. True Shot Barrage does not land on him, and Godlock keeping the pressure on. SKT are running away from this Whoa. one. It's gonna be a double kill for White! They keep going in, Godlock's now in the fray. The Flame Spitter is shut off there. Coming in by Faker. They're looking for the cooldowns, but they're in the middle of the fight, getting torn up. Apart. They're kicked back, but the hit to the face before he gets away. Can they chase down Faker? White is going to try and cut him off with a rift walk. Faker realizes it. He's going to try and turn back on Twizzy. Barrier's available though. Who will get the kill? It's going to be White. Faker's going to try and finish it off. But that is a lot of kills for White. 5 one, 2 An ace for Royal Club, and they're still down 3,000 gold. Let's consider how far behind they actually were before that fight and how incredible it is that they were able to win that one. Once they get an edge in a fight, they can chase down. They only really caught Piglet, but look how Manju also stuck around to try and land the counter engage. That's why everyone picks Sarah. It's for the counter engage, but there was only one wave of that. White and Uzi get to continue the chase. Force Pulse on top of him, smacks him down, double kill straight off the bat, and then Uzi was untouched throughout all that. Since it was Royal who were the ones who picked that team fight, no one on SKT got to hit him, and he was freely chasing them down. Even with the gargantuan gold deficit, Royal came out on top in that fight, and a death cap 
for whites. And already. absolutely amazing, too. They did it half blind. If you look at the position they're running from, those are only SKT wards. Royals did that by communication and knowing what their capabilities were. Now a dragon follows. This is what SKT was doing all last game. Kills and then an objective. Now it sways for Royal. They're still down 3,000 gold, though. You know what this reminds me of, Herb, actually? Is the Fnatic versus Royal game, except Royal swap positions. They're uh -oh. the team that can get kills. Faker getting caught out here. He's going to get jumped on. Cataclysm comes out, tries to turn aggressive. It is a kill for Godlike now. They're pushing on the turret. All five of them are in the mid lane, too. This is the Royal team. They just flipped a switch, and they seem to be back at it. They have to impact in the top lane with the Blade of the Rune King. He is going to do what a Jax does and well down on that turret, but they will pressure the mid at second tier. Royal usually does not mess around with split pushers. They usually let him go, but finally they have to pull back because they recognize the power of the split push Jax. Jax will beat down on that turret, but the rest of Royal are closing on him. He realizes the situation is going to get out of there. No matter how quick Royal are, they will not get there to him in time. Unless they show themselves, he will cancel that teleport. No, they did. Instead, they're going to go on to Old oh. Man Do and Piglet. Going down. They do have their... No, they do not have flashes up. They're going to get caught with whatever hits them. A good disengage from Pumon Do there. And it looks like nothing will actually come of that aggression. So things we do know is that Royal was able to win a team fight when they were down four to 5,000 gold, which means they can still win team fights if they initiate them in the right way. Piglet is running with no cleanse on Ezreal. And White's, did he not get that blue buff? Nope, Uzi got no, it. it got taken by Uzi. That really hurts him since he's went with just the tier as opposed to the regular tier Catalyst casted in build. So the overall chase of Royal actually got fairly greatly diminished when that blue buff went away. But even so, Royal is looking to punish SKT whenever SKT appears. Royal, with the crescendo up right now, does not want to mess around at this turret, and they may engage as soon as Tabe makes it to that fight. We see the ability power instantly being taken into consideration coming from Royal. The buys coming out of the Hex Drinker, the Negatron, which will change into the Aegis for Bengi so he can start to help the team, because going that personal mobility boots into the Madrids, he needs to start building auras for the team, realizing that fight was lost 3,000 gold down. So pressure being applied by SK Telecom, but good reactions from Royal Club. And, you know, we talked about the team compositions. One thing's for sure from Royal, if they start getting the edge in that team fight, they will be able to chase the entire yep. team down. That's how that ace came about. With a Vayne and a Cassidy, you do not get away. And something that is really interesting to me right now is both teams have very minimal ward coverage. We look at SKT. They only have a couple wards around the Dragonary, which isn't up. And then we look at Royal, and they only have a couple wards in their own red jungle. Considering how potent these team fights are, it is strange that they haven't been able to get wards. I think it's because both teams are actually too scared to get control back, knowing that there is a Cassidy on one side and a Zed on the other. If someone checks the wrong brush, especially as a lowly support in some of these games, they're dead. And it would be a huge amount of control lost back for that team. The front end burst coming from both of these teams is definitely something we saw change SKT's mind in the last fight, but then both teams still have the constant damage as well. You have Godlike coming in with Flame Spitter, Uzi, Impact to do the damage on Jax, so these teams very well rounded in their compositions. Royal closing the ga gold gap by just a thousand now. It's only 2k back. 10 to 7 as they've gone up in kills, but still, it seems that SKT always holds the turrets in their favor and control the game consistently like that. And Whites is on a completely glass cannon. Cassidy right now. I really want to see him fight Faker because the silence can stop a lot of the damage coming out from Faker post death mark. But man, that is an aggressive Cassidy build. No one builds Cassidy like this. And actually, looking at all the builds, they've all gone glass cannon. Look at Impact. He's now building towards that mm -hmm. transport stuff, the Blade of the Rune King, haunting Guy's first item for Godlike with them source boots. Everybody wants to lay that damage down early on. Looks like they could find something. The wards go down, or at least the seeds coming from Pumandu there on top of a pink ward. Royal trying to gain coverage of the top jungle, which is theirs right now as we see the 1v1 between Faker and Whites. Tit for tat in the bottom lane here. 21 minutes into the game, there wasn't much time before the end of the last one. So both of these teams looking to lock it down on the gridiron here and probably go for a next very big fight. And it is remarkable to me that Royal was able to survive in this game. Even though they're only down two or 3,000 gold, after that early laning phase where they lost so many turrets and seemed completely desperate, they won a fight exactly when it mattered, but they mm. still have to win many more. As we saw in the Royal vs. Fnatic series, when a team is down in farm and lanes and they're losing turrets, you have to win so many fights in a row to actually get control of the game back. Interesting burst of aggression there. You can see Faker's health dropping down. That's one combo from Whites. 
Just saying, yeah, I can damage you just like you can damage me. There will be big bursts of damage, and they're going to be tricky fights to catch hold of. And you can see, actually, the entire game, really, the breaks was put on it. 2,000 gold differential has stayed the same since Royal got that ace. Still looking like Uzi and Whites are going to be big players in this game. Godlike is still doing what a Rumble does best. He didn't have the best time in lane. He is down 50 CS, but the Equalizer still matters, and they're still in this. There is a Flash Crescendo up for Tabe and a Teleport on Kasten, while a Split Pushing Jax is there. If we know Royal, this is a chance for them to put serious pressure on a turret. We do see White's keeping that pressure, keeping that lane push. Faker just drove it up there. Royal looking to create a situation. They do see the impact is sticking around in that top lane. They have to make a decision very quickly whether they go for impact or go for turret. And rare move here by Royal. They actually pull back it against it SKT. It is super interesting. To force the fight, Impact might get the tower, but if you win that, the teleport in from Cassidy means you are going to have the higher numbers. Royal does not feel confident enough to fight that. Well, I think they thought Whites had maybe just bought enough time to keep that bottom tower down, but we do see Faker is going to react. Mandu comes in, clears out those ward coverage of the Baron. And remember, it was a 25-minute Baron in Game 1 mm -hmm. that SK Telecom pulled off. That may well be the focus of these two teams, but it is so much closer this time around. And I think one thing that is stopping Royal from their regular dive-happy gameplay is the knowledge of Pumandu Zyra and how difficult it actually is to dive turrets against them. If Whites were to get in but get caught by the Zyra ultimate or Grasping Roots, it would just be curtains for the entire Royal team. The blue buff. Now going over to Whites this time, you can see Uzi taking a side sidestep on this. They're going to try to steal this. <laughs> they will. No. It's going to be the dragon after, so at least the true shot barrage is down. This is going to give them safety, but no, they find Tave. The wards are going to be in their favor, and they've wasted quite a bit. Now to go back on impact. They go back on impact. He may be able to flash away from this one. He does, and that's going to be Royal back in a ways. The equalizer Whoa. goes down from Godlike. A little aggressive there. Uzi coming around the side. That's going to be a force balls coming out. SK Telecom actually forced to back away from this one. Lucky going deep. He wants to White still Ooh. trying to get in with that Force Pulse. That is going to be down Ooh. as he's waiting for it to come back up. Everybody getting quite low here. A good amount of damage taken across both teams, Ooh. but it looks like they are still pressuring Dragon. There is still a Jarvan ultimate up, and we could still see a Lee Sin kick for an engage. Lucky goes in. Where's the Jarvan ult? There, wow. Burst of damage coming straight through. Uzi getting in there on towards Faker. Faker trying to go aggressive, but he will get shut down by Uzi. They're going to keep on chasing. It's going to be impact the next target. You can see the Counter-Strike jumps away with that Leap Strike just in time. But Piglet, he's out of position he's running around the back still trying to get the chase in will he be able to pick anybody off that he has low health Ezreal does have the dick Ooh, oh kicked away he doesn't get the attack that <laughs> time this time Bengi stays alive in that situation but they are still everyone oh, oh the mystic shot threads it past godlike it's gonna be the one for one also going down a kill coming in from oh. white back and forth on the board 13 to 11 piglet comes up with a lone man double kill Absolute chaos after that one. Royal had the upper oh. catch. Oh, oh, oh. Wide left. So Whew. that fight was Royal winning and then Royal absolutely overcommitting. So watch the burst that went to Pumandu from White's glass cannon Cassidy. And then Faker went in for Tabe. Ill advised because the carries of Royal are Cassidy and Vayne. They chase. But at this point, you have to stop chasing. There's a dragon up that hasn't been taken, and they did not expect Piglet to be around the back. So as they overcommit is when Piglet decided to show himself and pick up some kills in the back. The kick came right as Whites was trying to finish him off, and then as they were working on impact, Piglet ran them down from the backside. That could have just been a royal control dragon after two kills, but instead it keeps the game even and actually extends SKT's gold lead ever so slightly. So absolutely crazy these fights like i said there's a good amount of front end burst but there's going to be dps to follow and we actually saw that fight going coast to coast now resulting in royals dragon but like we said this dragon could have happened sooner skt's already back to pressuring lane so royal now has to adapt and react and you know you were talking about the vision they didn't have anything royal kept on chasing completely blind it's going to be impact oh, they're going to jump in capitalism going in there but nobody else can get close he may actually wreck lucky before he can get in leap strike will be available in a second jumps onto bengi crescendo comes down we see the equalizer follow uzi's going to come in it's a kill for uzi and where do they go now because that's a very large damage dealer for skt that they have taken down but their lanes are pushed to the side and they did burn crescendo and Cataclysm, their two main forms of initiation. Almost deja vu of the last game. This is exactly what SK do it, T was doing, providing picks for themselves, making things happen. Ooh. A true shot barrage through three members. That attack speed now up on the passive, but they don't use it.
And Piglet is scary right now. Mm. With the Trinity Force and the Last Whisper, he is wrecking people. That was just a couple spells from him that took Tabe completely out of that turret push. That is now a huge priority. And SKT, with the Jax in their team composition, is very difficult to plan for in team fights because they have three people you need to kill now instead of you're kind of your often two. If you look at Royal, you'd have the Rumble who puts his ultimate down and then you don't need to kill him. They need to focus on casting in vain. But if you don't kill a Jax, a Zed, or an Ezreal, all three of those things become huge problems later in team fights. We do see the blue buff may well get invaded on SKT, pushing back up that mid lane. We see Uzi trying his best to shove out that top lane. They're still yet to get the top and bottom out of turrets. Rogue Club, while they seem to be winning these team fights, just like Fnatic, this is eerily close. Mm -hmm. They don't get the turrets down. And I think we're just going to keep seeing these team fights again and again. And I think Royal is going to be coming out on top for a fair bit, unless SKT can get a catch on someone, or if Whites makes a mistake in a team fight, because. Holy crap, Whites has so much ability power in casting right now. 454, and he is just <laughs> blowing people up. Piglet being a little uh, menace there, stealing away the Wraith with his Mystic Shot. They make their way back to mid. We will have the Teleport still up onto Whites. Not used a lot throughout the game, but at this point, with Impact being so far ahead, Faker being so far ahead, I don't think Teleport, I actually think Teleport's too long for that to happen. And there's actually two people on SKT that are in the top lane right now, which means if we're going to see a Royal push, it's now. Tabe has Flash Crescendo, but they don't have a minion wave. They don't have a minion wave, and you can see immediately it's Piglet being the defender, keeping them away, but this time around, Royal may pull the trigger. We do see Impact and Benki just waiting off in the wings. They are ready and waiting for this fight. Royal realize it. And, and this... Royal hasn't been able to pull the trigger on a fight in SKT territory. It's been too dangerous for them. And this would be a fight that they could try and do that. You have to imagine hey, how chaotic a fight would be. From out of the brush, you get an impact on Jax. Ooh. You get Bengi on Lee Sin. You got Fager coming in on Zed. They want all the vision they can get out of this fight. Impact getting a little aggressive there. Everybody's getting antsy. But Tabe's flash is down for an initiation, and that's because Whites wasn't near for this one. SKT's going to take some Baron control off of this one. Yeah, Tabe taken away from that one. Oracle on Bengi. May well Ooh. force Godlike. He's going to get caught out. The kick comes in. Impact's going to follow on through. Godlike gets kicked back in towards him. He's going to get created. He's going to get dropped down. Equalizer was down in time, though. Uzi gets caught out. He's in trouble. Looks like Uzi may make it out. He forces the flash. Gets into oh. the brush. The Can he oh, win? he puts on the barrier. No, Impact gets the leap strike. They take him down, though, as White's coming in from the back. And Lucky tries to hit him. The crescendo White comes is in. White is in all sorts of trouble, but the Zonya's out. That's his perfectly placed. Can he get out? Force Pulse comes out. No, Piglet is there. Tabe's in trouble. He's going to go down. Piglet's tanking down the turret. And look at Piglet. <laughs> Lucky's just in all sorts of trouble. He's like, what do we do? What do we do? I give a triple kill to Piglet. A five for one by SKT because they got the fight when Royal was not ready for it. Cassin and Sona are missing at the start of this fight. So Godlike, despite throwing down his equalizer, everyone on Royal tries to save him because Royal knows that they've actually been winning a lot of these fights previously, so they were willing to take this engagement. And as well as Uzi can kite, SKT can chase even better. Then White gets forced into over committing here. He gets caught by a grasping root. His entire health bar almost goes away. That's the danger of the glass cannon Cassidy and Piglet's scary Ezreal just finishes the job while taking the turret. We see the turret going down in the top lane and the mid lane pressured after that. A very reminiscent score of five to one in turrets now. One minute ago, the last game was finished. SKT is gonna have to put a few more on this one in their eyes, but Royal still looking to thwart this off, but it's still heavily sways. 6,000 gold now in favor of SKT. Yeah, it's a big advantage once again for SK Telecom Royal Club resetting, having to sit back. They were the ones trying to be aggressive, and both times these teams have been aggressive, it has backfired. SK Telecom with that lead, with the kills, the towers. Royal just haven't got close to those turrets right now, and it doesn't look like they're going to, because SK Telecom are becoming too strong. Yeah, and Royal already came back from near death once in this game. Can they do it twice? They need another type of miracle fight where Whites can get in at the end, and specifically where Royal could catch an initiation. But because they're down five turrets to one, it's so difficult for them to even think about this Baron. SKT normally just baits for kills, and right now, 
This is going to be a steal attempt for Lucky. Doesn't get it. Two Blade of the Rune Kings crushing down Baron, and then possibly Lucky. The crescendo from the backside, but it's only to try and help. The disengage is there. Quite a bit was used just from over the wall, and that leaves Royal to have a hard defense now in the mid turrets. It's the turret kills that gave SKT that chance. And Lee Sin had the added benefit of timing his resonating strike with his smite to spike more Baron damage down and made it so Lucky could not steal. If you remember the Fnatic series, Lucky secured multiple what we call 50-50 Barons when it's a smite war. This time, Bengi gets it, and SKT might push hard. Big lit and go. They don't have Crescendo available. Tarbay getting caught out. Look at that. Godlike went down in a split second. Didn't even get to catch his health bar. It is going to be SK Telecom rushing straight in. That's going to be the first inhibitor of the game. And they're going to back away. White's trying to get the burst down. No, Piglet's going to follow. Piglet trying to get into the kill. They are easily going to wipe these guys out. Piglet flashes out. The Baron buff keeping him healthy now. They're now onto Lucky. Uzi doing what he can, but it's only from the outside trying to make something happen. The True Shot Barrage misses, but it leaves Uzi limping away. What a push there by SKT. They had the Baron buff. They knew they could take fights, and Piglet is playing out of his mind this game on Ezreal. Always going in right after White uses his Rift Walk on Kastin, so he is safely trading damage back on Kastin without the threat of assassination. This fight all started because Faker finished off Godlike, so they did not have to worry about Rumble. But specifically, watch the way Faker keeps his distance. We actually don't have time for that, because Faker's going for more. Faker gets the kill. Uzi backs the hell away from that one. Doesn't want a part of that. Piglet becoming a beast. Faker becoming a beast. SK Telecom are deadly right now. After a game one loss, Royal put their eggs in the basket of we give them what they want and counter pick it. It doesn't seem to have worked for them this game. No, that's just too much for them to come back to now, I feel. This surely is Royal resetting once again, mm -hmm. thinking, okay, we're going to be the red side again, I believe. No, the next game, yeah, they are the red side. Yeah, yeah, because they red chose side. red side this game. Yep. How do we counter this? We don't give Faker Z, that's oh for sure. My word. We don't give him Oriana, we don't give him Gragas. What do we give him? This is the questions they need to be asking themselves <laughs> right now because SKT has shown a lot of proficiency here, and Royal tried their curveball in this game. I feel like the Cassadin is a big curveball from Whites. They're only, remember, they are down 11,000 gold, but I think it's the seven turrets to one that are really right. sealing it right now for SKT because of the way they have been able to control the map. But the Whites versus Faker matchup has been extremely close in this one. It was not extremely close in the first game. And as far ahead as he got on Cassidy in this game, SKT's coordination overall and their ability to play as a team thus far have really just secured them this second victory, it seems. The ability to keep their mentality up in a lot of their interviews, these players said, we're really not worried about our skill. It's about the mentality throughout the game. If you can keep that up, you'll prevail. See what they can do going into this Mandu. Working the oracles, making sure they have vision on the left side. You can see Royal, no wards in their jungle either. So SKT has a safe exit here if something does go wrong. There's so much damage built up from these carries right now that the moment someone gets remotely close, you see Tabe removed from the map. You see Uzi even just dropped before you even see that health bar going down. And they're just poking his turret. There's nothing Royal can do to defend it. Yeah, I think we're going to see a hard engage from Royal very quickly. <laughs> there it is, straight away, Crescendo coming down, Equalizer gonna follow, Impact actually take a very low, but look at that! The turnaround damage from SKT! It looks like they're gonna continue under the turret, Bengi is the one tanking, and he gets out on a safe safeguard, if you will, Uzi oh, finds a kill, oh. no! Take it from White, they continue under Pumandu, Piglet now in the eyes of Royal! The chase is strong, Piglet's gonna get caught out, but look at that! Sonya's oh. down, down him. Piglet gets away, and that's not gonna be White's in trouble! What oh. a turnaround coming out from SK Telecom, just as Royal thought they could chase SK Telecom are back in control. These fights are decided by inches right now oh. and small ticks of health bars. This could be the game for SKT, but no, they're blinking red. They're just trying to take more advantages. And wow, this is a Royal team not giving up without a fight. Home guards looks like it is the saving grace here for Royal. They're able to get enough HP back into the base and that's just God, like the only one left up in that fight. And he was almost taken down there in the end. Yeah, and look at how they barely went for impact, nearly just took him out of the fight, and how the turn happened. It's all about Uzi and White and how they stayed healthy. There was a QSS that got popped very early by Uzi to stop the Faker death mark, and once he was out of the picture, it was chase time for Royal. But watch, we've been talking about Piglet playing out of his mind. 
He waits till this moment to use the barrier, gets it with the shield as well from Lee Sin. And then since Uzi was surely dead, he had to flash away. And that was a rare miscalculation from Uzi, thinking he would finish the kill on a piglet before he flashed away, and he was just wrong. What a crazy, crazy engage. Royal, do not count them out. They are holding on just about. However, they only have one inhibitor turret. Both Nexus turrets do stand, and that inhibitor in the middle will be respawning shortly, but you see the timer ticking down. One minute 34, that Baron will be the next focus target for SK Telecom, and I'm still not sure if Royal can fight for it. And Royal is still showing some proficiency for fighting because even with the Baron buff in that last push, it was an extremely close fight for SKT. If Tabe gets a crescendo in the right spot, it Ooh. could give them something, but knowing that there's a QSS, it makes it more dangerous. World doesn't care about fighting early. The jump in from Impact, the equal eye, the laser on the red carpet, but they're all off of it already. They've entered into the fight. Royals health bars are just getting demolished. Uzi on the outside trying to do what he can, but it's not gonna be enough. Uzi's chased into the base, and SKT wipes him for the ace, the Quadra for Piglet. Oh. Bengi stealing, stealing the quadra there, just getting the pen to the end. But it's going to be SK Telecom taking this game. Strong performance in game two once again. Royal put up a great fight, lots of kills back and forward. But it's SK Telecom taking game two in the World Finals. It's only going to take eight more minutes than the last game. They solidify it and they do it just as last time. That was a much closer affair from the first one, but really SK Telecom pulled it together after some mid-game hiccups. You really have to credit that Ezreal from Piglet making the correct plays in the team fights, being able to play around White's glass cannon Cassidy, and you can tell Royal is on the ropes right now. You have to be. You saw Jax twice in the top. You saw Lee as well. What do you ban? What's good? We just gave him everything they wanted at their birthday. Mm -hmm. How Giving them it? Zed almost worked. I don't think Faker had a monstrous impact on that game. He no. did try some roll Both mids did great. It did not work too well, and Whites was definitely not shut down, but it was the overall lanes. And it's so strange because Royals lanes seemed absolutely next level against Fnatic. And that is not the case against SK Telecom. All that pre-tournament hype for SKT kind of coming true right now. Solid, solid play from Piglet in that last game. Let's send it over to Quickshot and his crew for a breakdown of the action. Packed match by SKT. Thank you very much, D-Man, and what a game. Before we get into breaking it down, I do believe my train is, is on its way. Give me Whoa. a ticket. May I have one? Thank <laughs> yes, you very sir. much, ladies and gentlemen. I, I am boarding the SKT train. <laughs> I do want to talk about this matchup, though, and uh, picks and bans. It's something we start with every single matchup. I have to highlight Bengi. He was target banned by Royal in game one. We talked about how he likes to play Jarvan, likes to play Elise, and he got his tournament champion right now of Lee Sin. He's 8-1 and one with Lee Sin with a KDA of over 14 in this tournament. His numbers are absolutely phenomenal, and in this game, Royal gave away Zed and Jax and Lee Sin. Like, it's, yeah. it's something you can't do. I was talking about before, like, I don't know why they're banning uh, at Bengi, because he does play all the high priority junglers here. The real surprise was letting Zed and Jax through for SKT. That is two very strong split pushers that they can use, which is the style that SKT likes to use. And then the wild card coming in with Cassidy with the very last pick for them. It was really interesting and it was not a royal strategy. You know, usually they have strong lanes early, but they picked all these losing lanes and then they were going to try and have the upper hand late in the split pushing game with a teleport Cassidy, but it did not work out for them because when you lose your lanes all early, it kind of guarantees the possibility of a 3-1-1 split push late. Just, that's just what SKT wanted. So just speaking to Royal pre-game, uh, the Vi ban, I can kind of understand because they think that Vi is an instant kill for Faker and if yeah. Vi just flash ulties white mid and Faker gets first blood, it's GG, dude. And there's honestly not a lot of power or counterplay to a Vi like Ari gank or a Vi Zed gank. I, I want to take and talk about this composition and what we saw. This game and composition really reminded me of game two against OMG that Royal played, where we had these three glass cannon builds. Again, a rumble with the Leandries first. And what we saw was the perfect counterplay to that there. SK Telecom had a read on this. They control vision. They wait very, very patiently for one person to get out of position. And that's really what blew this game open. Catching, Faker catching Godlike in the jungle and then rotating to, to like, take that top turret. 
I mean, it was just pedal to the metal from there. That's true, but earlier in the game, you have to say, SKT didn't play it flawlessly. They, they didn't, no. grouped yeah. up for a team fight at 16 minutes instead of just split pushing. And that's where um, Royal got back into the game because they have got the team fighting team. Tabe flash ulti, the crescendo, almost got the back. Hang on, hang on, hang on, because you, you, you're cutting into my job now. <laughs> okay. Because this is actually something that we've prepped. It, it, it is a replay that we're going to pull up onto your screen right now, guys. As you've already highlighted, it was actually the saving grace that pulled Royal back into this game. And if it wasn't for getting caught out later, maybe could have turned it. Crepo, talk me through the replay and, and you know, what Royal did right and maybe what SK did a little wrong. So Royal got into this position because they lost all their pressure early. As we said, they had this very Rome heavy side, uh, Rome heavy game rather on both sides. Their answer, they tried to do that with Cassidy with teleport. Didn't really work, so they're behind. But this is what Mundy said, they have this triple threat comp, really squishy, and in a team fight, basically what they want is lucky to go in, draw all the aggro, and if he gets, somehow gets blown up, he does his job because if they're getting lucky, then three threats are alive and they're just gonna ravage the entire team. If we roll the script, we see exactly what happens. This is Tabe doing a really good crescendo. Like catches Piglet after tower shot. Piglet gets blown up. Lucky goes in, draws all the aggro. Really good job. Lucky gets blown up by Deathmark. Now Uzi is alive, Godlikes is alive, and White's is alive. Flashes into Rift Walk, into his E, double kill. This is basically what happens. The AoE team fight blow up all these really squishy targets, do so much damage that you don't even have time to turn around and kill them. Uh, this is what basically got them back into the game, and if this would happen to be a repeat process, maybe they could have won the game. But in the end, we have to realize SKT is a really strong team, and they, they don't make a mistake twice. And I think what you have to congratulate um, Royal here is they saw that very small window of, of Piglet moving just a little bit too for, forward, taking that tower shot, and then the, the conviction that which Royal went in and took advantage of that was pretty astounding. That's what I was talking about when you have the initiation on your yeah. shot caller. It's, it's going to go Well, off. very final word before we move on. Double lift. Yeah, uh, I want to see Royal have an answer to Jax this time. Either a ban or like an answer that's not Rumble. Like, that doesn't really make very much sense. <laughs> Rumble does not, like deal with Jax. And I want to see Uzi, if the enemy team is a split pusher like Zed or Jax, be able to deal with them 1v1. I think he's a little bit scared to get into 1v1 situations and like potentially get outplayed, but he needs to be confident and be like, I'm going to go 1v1 this Jax. Well, there is no more room for error if you are Royal or a Royal supporter. They are down 0-2 in the series. And we're going to take a quick break from dissecting all the action, actually see what you guys, the fans, have had to say. Earlier today, we did ask you, who has been the MVP of the Season 3 World Championship and why? And here are some of our favorite answers. At I stops. He says, the MVP to me is definitely Uzi. Superhuman reactions and mechanics. Even Double Lift has no points of criticism. Unique. Now, first of all, you're speaking for Double Lift. Do you agree? Yeah, that's not true at all. Okay, so <laughs> when he first came into the tournament, his first few games, I identified literally zero mistakes that he made. But as the, as the tournament has gone on, I feel like the level of his opponents has gone up. And he's been making a lot more mistakes, especially in laning phase. I, I don't think his 2v2 is nearly as strong as I expected. And you see him just get completely bullied around by like, Pignit and Poo. And another thing is just that he's com not comfortable split pushing solo as Vayne, which I think is a necessary skill. He does have his moments of sheer brilliance, though. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and seeing as though you've uh, volunteered to take the next one, Thank you. at KaiTKGG, my MVP is Faker. Watching him play with such confidence, swagger, and mechanical efficiency sends shivers down my spine. I think someone's got a crush. What Fake, do you think, Krepper? Faker with the swagger. Um, yeah, just, I mean, how can we deny it? Things Faker does is a meme and everything. He's playing so, so well. Just whatever catches my eyes whenever Gragas is, play comfortably doing the E-Flash. Uh, Nagna did it too against, uh, was it against Faker? Yeah. I think it was, yeah. yeah. So Nagna did it too, and then, uh, and then Faker played, he just played so well, mechanics, top notch. Yeah. Yeah, it was super intelligent player. Now our final tweet from at Jack Roscoe. He says, Piglet should be MVP because he might not have been the flashiest player at Worlds, but he's never had a bad game either. I want to think about it, and I, I, think I agree with that. He's, he's been pretty solid. Even, even in SK Telecom's losses, he's usually the one keeping the team in the game. And many of you may not know, but Piglet actually had a higher KDA than Faker in Champion Summer. This guy has had a red-hot season so far, and he can carry just as hard. It helps when your front lines never die, and you can just That's shoot true. from the back That's line. True. <laughs> Okay, so keep those tweets rolling in. We're at LOL Esports, and be sure to use the hashtag Worlds if you want a chance of getting your answer read on air. All right, guys, we do have to take a very quick break, but when we return, it is game three, potentially the final one between SKT and Royal Club, with Faker and his team just that one win away from taking the Season 3 title. Plus, evil genius's jungler Snoopy will join Shox to break down the keys to SKT's dominant performance. But first, 
we take a spin around the globe to see how the world is watching the Season 3 World Championship Final. Three, two, one, go! Yeah! Yeah! 